Welcome to the Bakersfield City Council meeting. This television broadcast is brought to you by the local cable companies, the County of Kern and the City of Bakersfield. You can watch the rebroadcast of this meeting Saturday at 7 p.m., Sunday at 10 a.m., and the following Wednesday at 7 p.m. You can download the agenda for this meeting at www.bakersfieldcity.us. Presiding over this evening's meeting, the Honorable Mayor Karen K. Go. Good evening. It's my pleasure to call to order the 515 regular City Council meeting of May 10th, 2023. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mayor Go. Here. Vice Mayor Gonzalez. Here. Councilmember Arias. Here. Councilmember Weir. Here. Councilmember Smith. Councilmember Freeman. Here. Councilmember Gray. Here. Councilmember Core. Here. Thank you. Welcome to all of you. Sorry to keep you waiting. Do we have any students here who are here for class assignments tonight? None tonight, but uh, we have the pleasure tonight of having Pastor Harry Marakin, pastor of Iglesia de Pentecostal. Uh, it's actually Iglesia de Dios Pentecostal, very important word there, who's going to offer the invocation. Pastor, thank you for being so active uh, in our community, uh, focusing on so many different areas of outreach and now on education. And then following the invocation, Ivan Tran, who's a senior at Ridgeview High School, will lead us in the pledge. Ivan is a Ward 7 Alternate Youth Commissioner. He's a member of the ASB. He's on the Link Crew and the National Honor Society. He's also on the Kern High School District Student Advisory Council Board, and he plans to pursue a career in the medical field and become an ER physician. And I just found out that he's going to be a fellow Trojan. So fight on, Ivan. Would you all please stand, Pastor? It's a privilege to be here. My name is Harry Marroquin of Iglesia de Dios Pentecostal. And as a church, we always pray for our mayor and our councils. And it's a great opportunity to be here in this chamber to lead the prayer. In El Salvador, Mayo 10, May 10th, is the uh, day for Mother's Day. So I want to say Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers here. Psalms 90, the prayer of Moses, uh, verse 1 and 2 says, Lord, you have been our refuge from generation to generation before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Will you bow your head and join me in prayer? Our Father in heaven, blessed be your name. I want to thank you on behalf of all who are gathered here today. Thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for life itself, for the measure of health. Thank you for the ability to be involved in useful work. Thank you for Mayor Karen Go and for our council members. Thank you for the city of Bakersfield and for loving our people. I pray for our mayor and for the various levels of city officials and for this assembled council. I am asking that you would graciously grant them wisdom to govern our city in such a way that we can live peacefully in quiet lives marked by godliness, dignity, and prosperity. Confidence in what is good and fitting, personal peace and in their lives, enjoying their tasks, protection from all harm to them and their families, that you may lead them to all truth and righteousness. Father, we pray for our city, the safety of our citizens. We ask that you help us reduce the number of homicides, crime, fatal accidents in our city and in Kern County, that you, O oh Lord, uh, give us wisdom to work with our schools and the education system that our children and youth will choose a path of righteousness and nonviolence. I pray that you may bless the marketplace, the workforce, the industries, the small businesses, the corporations, agriculture, oil, and services in our city and county so that we can have prosperity and a bright future for generations to come into your return. I pray for the agenda set before the mayor and the city councils today. Please give an assurance of what will please you and what will benefit those who live and work in, in and around our beloved city of Bakersfield. In a name that is above every name, and in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Please place your right hand over your heart. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America 
and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and you may be seated. Thank you, Ivan, and thank you, Pastor. Here are a few guidelines to help our meeting run smoothly. We request that you turn off your phones. Please be courteous in the use of cameras and videos, and for safety reasons and as a courtesy to others, no signs are allowed in the council chamber or in the lobby. Applause is allowed during the presentations portion of the meeting, but not during other portions of the meeting. Everyone in attendance is expected to adhere to the rules of decorum established by the resolution of the city council. Failure to abide by the city's rules of decorum, including any disruptive behavior that interferes with our ability to have an orderly and efficient meeting, prevents the city council from conducting the business of our city. Consider this a first warning to everyone in attendance that conduct that disrupts the meeting may result in expulsion and or the chambers being clear. Behavior that disrupts the meeting includes repetitive statements, going off topic, shouting, outbursts from the audience, and surpassing the two-minute time limit. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Presentations item 4A, proclamation to Jeremy T. Tobias, CEO of CAPK, Kevin Burton, CAPK Foundation Board Chair, and Maritza Jimenez, CAPK Board Vice Chair, declaring Community Action Month in Bakersfield during May 2023. May 2023 has been designated as National Community Action Month, celebrating our nation's 1,000 plus community action agencies. But I think we're the best. CAPK works to connect people to life-changing services. I think you've all been at events where you've seen how they've really made a difference from pathways to prosperity, pathways for prosperity all across our nation. And thank you to Jeremy Tobias, Kevin Burton, Maritza Jimenez, and it is now my honor to present this proclamation. Whereas Community Action Partnership of Kern has made essential contributions to individuals and families across Kern County by creating economic opportunities and strengthening communities, and whereas CAPK addresses underlying causes of poverty, alleviates the effects and promotes dignity and self-sufficiency in the communities we serve, and whereas CAPK delivered over 19.1 million million pounds of food across Kern County in 2022 through CAPK Food Banks, and whereas CAPK operates the Friendship House Community Center located in Bakersfield, tending to children within the community and providing a site for educational assistance, mentorship, and community. And whereas Community Action Network is celebrating 59 years of innovation, impact, and proven results for Americans, now therefore I, Karen Go, Mayor of the City of Bakersfield, do hereby proclaim May 2023 as National Community Action Month in our city and thank CAPK for its hard work, dedicated service to our Bakersfield residents. It's my honor to present this to the CEO, Jeremy Tobias. Jeremy? Good evening, Honorable Mayor Go and members of the City Council. I'm Jeremy Tobias, CEO of Community Action Partnership of Kern. I am here to thank the City Council for declaring May to be Community Action Month for the City of Bakersfield. Working together with the City, CAPK has made lasting impacts in our community. Together, we have promoted important community endeavors such as early childhood education, healthy living, and nutrition education. Community Action Partnership of Kern was established in May of 1965 as the county's official anti-poverty agency. We operate 19 life-changing programs promoting self-sufficiency. A few highlights of our programs include our Head Start Early Childhood Education Program, operating 30 Head Start centers throughout the county, including 15 of those in Bakersfield. They help children ages zero to five build foundational skills so they can excel as they enter the school system. The CAPK Food Bank distributes more than 19 million pounds of food a year from our warehouse location in Southeast Bakersfield, utilizing partnerships with more than 150 food pantries and community sites throughout the county. 
40, a 40,000 square foot addition to that food bank is supported in part by the City of Bakersfield CDBG funding, and that construction is underway and will be completed this fall. Our two-in-one telephone service operating 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, is a resource and referral call center based in Bakersfield. It provides services to Kern and other counties in the southern San Joaquin Valley, connecting them to more than 1,500 social services. Our energy program includes utility and water bill assistance and, and home renovations that increase energy efficiency within the homes. And our migrant childhood alternative our migrant child care alternative payment program is very unique in the state, helping migrant agricultural workers by providing child care for their families seamlessly throughout California. We're the only contractor in California providing this service. Many of our services rely on community partners to create success, and we are honored to partner with the city of Bakersfield to meet the needs of this community. Also, CAPK has formed a foundation to assist in funding the programs that which we operate. I would like to introduce Kevin Burton, our foundation board chair, to say a few words. Thanks, Jeremy. Mayor and city council members, it has been an honor to be part of this brand new foundation. We was established right before COVID hit, so it was a little tough during this whole process through COVID, but it was also uh, you know, a learning point where we were able to, to develop these stronger relationships with the state and the federal and the county and the city for us to to bring in these dollars to help expand the food bank of 40,000 square feet and obviously you know this fall is I guess expected to open up so we're really excited about that the one thing that we're going to do with the foundation is really developing these other relationships with other community partners and other organizations to help fund uh, necessary programs for Capcade for the growth and we know as anybody else does here in the county that that need for the food bank is going to continue to increase and that's just what we're going to see but it's great to have that we're great to have this partnership with our local government especially with the city of Bakersfield. and we had a great meeting this has been several months ago with uh city manager christian clegg and the team with gary it was a great meeting it was uh it was uh, it's a great partnership and we look forward to, to many more years and helping to expand what cap k has to offer here in the county but also with our foundation so thanks again appreciate it One more. I'm going to bring this down a little bit. Good afternoon. I am Marita Jimenez, also a part of the board. I'm here for CAPK. I just wanted to share a little bit um, why I am part of this board, and I just feel that this organization does things that are amazing for children and adults. And to access all these various services, all they got to do is call um, dial 211. So if you can share that number for us, it's a great service. It's of great benefits, and 211. Thank you. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Presentations item 4B, proclamation to Greg Strakalus, Director of the City of Bakersfield Public Works Department, declaring National Public Works Week in Bakersfield during the week of May 24th, 2023. Imagine a city with no roads, no running water, no sewer. Mm. Public works is an important way it's so important to our everyday lives, isn't it? And the infrastructure that they provide is that which we need so much. Designing, constructing, renovating, operating, everything. So that can go on and on and on. And I am just so grateful for our Public Works Department team. It's my honor to present this proclamation. Whereas Public Works professionals focus on infrastructure, facilities, and services that are vital importance to sustainable and resilient communities and to the public health, high quality of life, and well-being of the people of Bakersfield, 
And whereas these infrastructure, facilities, and services could not be provided without the dedicated efforts of public works professionals who are engineers, managers, and employees at all levels of government in the private sector, and whereas it is in the public interest for the citizens, civic leaders, and children in Bakersfield to gain knowledge and maintain an ongoing interest and understanding of the importance of public works and public works programs in their respective neighborhoods. Whereas the year 2023 marks the 63rd annual National Public Works Week. Now, therefore, I, Karen Go, Mayor of the City of Bakersfield, do hereby proclaim May 21st through 27th, 2023, as National Public Works Week in our city and urge all citizens and civic organizations to acquaint themselves with the issues involved in providing public works services to our citizens and to recognize the contributions which public works officials make every day to our health, safety, comfort, and quality of life. It's my honor to be able to present this to our Director of Public Works, Mr. Greg Strakelis. Thank you, Mary Go, City Council. Thank you very much um, for the recognition. On behalf of the Public Works Department, uh, we, we greatly appreciate it. This is the 63rd year um, recognizing Public Works as an entity uh, that works hard to keep communities going. Um, if there's one thing that a community, uh, many, all communities rely on, um, there are clean water, there's sanitary sewer, safe transportation, reliable power, and it's just a privilege to be part of a team to help provide that, that type of infrastructure in connecting the world. I am joined here by Sean Kakala, General Services Manager, and Kyle Perez, who is the President of the American Public Works Association for the current chapter. Kyle, did you want to say a few words? Thank you, Honorable Mayor. Thank you, City Council. I appreciate everything that you guys do. Uh, and to making our city great, and public works, and how that functions. Um, I thank you for the recognition that you guys are providing for National Public Works, and how that is important in our modern society. Uh, our local chapter uh, really tries to emphasize how education is important, and we definitely try to show and <laughs> how we and provide uh, additional funding and scholarship for this pursuit in their personal and professional lives. And we hope that in this that they can also see the benefit in their local community. And uh, we thank you for the recognition. Um, sorry. <laughs> Honorable Mayor, distinguished city council, uh, thank you for the kind words, um, Mayor Go. My director has summed it up, but as a member of the Public Works Department for over 23 years with the city, uh, I'm glad we get a chance to recognize the people of the Public Works Department who have worked hard to not only meet the city objectives, but the council objectives uh, as a team and recognize the, the impact, the positive impact uh, public works services and infrastructure enhancement and maintenance has done. So thank you very much for taking the time to recognize us. Appreciate it. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Presentations, item 4C, Proclamation to Tony Renteria, Event and Education Coordinator for Bike Bakersfield, declaring National Bike Month in Bakersfield during May 2023. Are you not going to come up? All right, well. <laughs> Welcome. 
Thank you so much, Bike Bakersfield. I know that you're out there on a regular basis just uh, making a difference in our community, also providing bikes for those who otherwise wouldn't have them. And so it's my honor to issue this proclamation. The mayor of the city of Bakersfield, California, has officially proclaimed May 2023 as National Bike Month in our city in honor of the organizations, including Bike Bakersfield, who promote greater public awareness of bicycle operations and bicycle safety education in our city, in recognition of Bakersfield's commitment to creating a bicycle-friendly community to help improve residents' health and well-being, and in recognition of our community's efforts to reduce bike-related collisions, injuries, and fatalities by advancing the use of bicycling as both a means of transportation and recreation year-round. It's my honor to be able to present this to you, Mr. Renteria. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor Go and City Council for this proclamation. Uh, it's a great day for cycling in uh, Kern County. Um, so I like to make things pretty short and sweet uh, to the point. I know you guys are very busy. Um, we have uh, some events coming up uh, in Bakersfield. Obviously, May is Bike Month. Uh, so we have, uh, we have a event uh, at Luther Martin Luther King Park this Saturday, uh, Jefferson Park next Saturday, and a Bike to Work Day on the 17th. <clears throat> for our Bike to Work Day, we can provide e-bikes to anyone that does not have a bike or wants to try one out. Um, I gave the, uh, the city clerk um, all the flyers and information so all you guys can get a packet. Uh, so thank you so much. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. And we got Cindy Para right there. She's here. Uh, been working for maybe seven months. Best seven months of my life, Cindy. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Public statements. In keeping with Council's resolution, the public statements portion is now divided into two periods. There's a period for items listed on the meeting agenda and items not on the meeting agenda. Statements for items listed on tonight's agenda are given a two-minute time limit, 20 minutes total per agenda item. The consent calendar as a whole constitutes one agenda item. Statements regarding items not listed on the agenda are given a two-minute time limit, 20 minutes total. If you have Written comments that are longer than your verbal statement, give them to the city clerk who will give copies to the council. If you're here to make a public statement, please fill out a public speaker card and give your completed card to the city clerk. We ask that you mark whether you're here to speak on an item listed on tonight's agenda or in a matter not on the agenda. Speakers who do not identify a specific agenda item will be presumed speakers for the non-agenda portion. Those speakers will be called during the non-agenda portion of the meeting. If you're here on consent calendar hearing items 8A through C and hearing item 9A, now is not the time to speak. You will be given an opportunity to speak when those items are called later in the meeting. We're very interested and concerned with your issues. However, due to the public notice requirement of the Brown Act, the council can't take action when an item isn't on the agenda. The council can, however, refer your matter to committee or request that staff contact you. Madam Clerk, do we have any public speakers regarding items listed? Listed on tonight's agenda. America, we've received one speaker card regarding items listed on tonight's agenda from Michael Turnipseed, who will be speaking on item 7U. Welcome. Matt, Madam Mayor, members of the Council, Michael Turnipseed, I represent the Kern County Taxpayers Association. And since the item is about Measure N, I'm going to take a very broad interpretation of what Measure N and what my comments today. Um, as I sat through many meetings the last 
month talking about the budget and where the money money's going. Um, it's becoming evident that the measure in G we're rich is getting toward the end of that rodeo. Uh, and in the last city council meeting, uh, city manager Clegg says the, the available for one time good major programs is going to be down probably around the 20% of measure in. That's certainly not what we were planning on. And I'm going to talk about another item later, a non-agenda item. But the idea of getting measurable outcome and benefit when the council makes a decision, I asked for but haven't received the information yet. I want to know exactly how much money Measure N was spent in the police department and in homelessness and affordable housing. I haven't gotten that information yet, so I'm going to just estimate. I've estimated that in the last four years, the police department has received $130 million out of measure ends 380, I'm using roughly 35, 40%. And we see the response times, we see the response categories. If you're not a one or a two category response, you're not gonna see anybody. And that's been pretty evident made by the chief himself. We paid for improved public safety and it's not happening. We're, we put all this money into housing and homelessness and I think anybody who's on the street of Bakersfield will tell you the homeless prom pro problem today is worse than it was four years ago because the people who are on the streets have the most challenges and they're not being addressed. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Turnipseed. Next speaker, please. Mayor Go, the next four speakers are on items not listed on tonight's agenda. Thank you. Go ahead and call them. The first speaker is Nadine Escalante. Welcome. Good evening, Mayor Go and council members. I'm here in response to the presentation that Chief Terry gave to you all at 315. Um, as, a as a trusted community member that meets regularly with BPD, I talk to community members on a regular basis that some of you have probably never ever spoken to, nor ever will. Um, Mr. Rear, in your district, we have a weed shop right next to Highland High School. I have brought this to BPD's attention for the last eight months and nothing has been done. All the business owners are over there are very concerned. Me as a parent is very concerned because our kids are walking past a weed store every single day. Giving BPD more officers is not the answer. Response times, where are our officers? We have asked BPD for show us the statistics of how long your officers are on a call. They refuse to do it. We see officers for vehicles at one call. There was one call of a community member who trusts me, who said, we had officers, six officers at a call for two hours. There was no life or death threat there. So we want, as accountability, as taxpayers, where are our officers and why are they taking so long and wasting measure in money? This is our money. If we're paying for public safety, shouldn't we get some? And when he's talking about the issues with homelessness, yes, there's a huge issue. Issues with, you know, the uh, trucks, things that you're talking about. Where is issues addressing the Cadillac converters? This is issues that affect people's work, kids going to school, and you guys have done nothing, and BPD has done nothing as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Escalante. Next, oh, uh, go ahead. Councilmember Weir. Thank you, Mayor. Could somebody contact police and have her and contact her to see what we can do to remedy that situation? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Weir. Madam Clerk, uh, next speaker, please. Michael Turnipseed. Welcome. 
Michael Turnipseed again, representing the Kern County Taxpayers Association. I sat through the previous meeting and listened to a presentation about community aggregation. And I think it's safe for us to say there is no person in the public sector, no organization that has spent more time and more effort in dealing with utility issues in the CPUC and PG&E and Edison than Kern Tax. Nobody, we have access, and we, you all know who sits on my board, we have energy people that know energy, that build plants, regulate plants, sell energy, and none of them were contacted. You're going to hire some consultant maybe who said, I'll do it for free. And we all know what happens when you get, you don't have to pay for anything. It's not worth much. But a hook in to get you so he can really get into your veins. We want this to be successful, whether it's right or wrong. But looking at the past things that have happened in community aggregation, if you look at the map, they're all along the coast. People don't have air conditioning. They, it's, not 100, it's not 95 degrees at 10 o'clock at night in San Francisco, where we have that here. We have unique challenges, uh, peak, really big peak demand use, and the things that green energy can't necessarily fix. And I guess to close, I'm going to say, oh, well, you're going to have all this money so you can do all these other projects. Everything above the cost of the energy itself and community aggregation is nothing but an excess tax that the government is putting on its residents. That's it, plain and simple. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Turnipseed. Next speaker, please. Paul Manfesti. Hi, my name Welcome. is uh, Paul Manfesti. I live in Ward, I reside in Ward 1. Um, I want to commend those responsible for putting together a housing plan that includes a history of Bakersfield's past segregationist zoning laws. Some may find this an inconvenient truth, something disturbing, or too sensitive to our residents, concerned that it would give us a black eye. But a black eye usually uh, clears up quickly, while a festering wound left unattended will poison the community. There is a movement... Um, to block some of our racist history and our school systems and into societies under the guise of, it just divides us, not unite us. This is usually being propagated by those who have traditionally had a position of privilege in our society. It's easy for us to just say to others, just get over the past. But our past laws have shaped where we are today and it's important to confront this history, not bury it if we ever want to unite. Condoleezza Rice wrote in her autobiography that in order to be seen as equal to whites, she had to excel at a higher level than whites to be seen as equal. While uh, Rice is to be commended for her accomplishments, I believe that is too much a burden for everyone else have to, to prove that point. It demonstrates that we are still not here today. Um, we used to be taught to never forget the past or we are doomed to repeat it. Within my lifetime, I remember how Cal State Bakersfield had problems um recruiting faculty of color due to finding suitable housing for them due to racial restrictions and apartments here in, in town. Um, a lot of work had to be done to convince them to rent to those people. Um, it was a city effort and convince them to finally shake loose those restrictions. I remember the days at South High School when black students would be placed in lower track, tracked coursework regardless of how they scored on placement tests. This legacy still lingers today. Let's turn a festering wound into a black eye by keeping this important history in this housing report. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Vesti. Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. Stacy Shepard. Welcome, Ms. Shepard. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I came down to um, speak to you tonight about flooding concerns. I live um, in Brighton Park, which is just to the uh, west of the Era baseball fields on Juetta near Stockdale. And I'd say it's probably a half mile from the river. And I walk my dogs a lot back behind the fields and just have seen the water you know, spilling over into some of the land back there. And also reading the stories um, by Lois Henry with SJV Water and in the Bakersfield Californian. 
And I just frankly have been surprised by the lack of um, information that I've been hearing from any, you know, local government. Um, I, you know, I, I, I believe the stuff that Lois reports, and it just seems like, you know, this is something we should be paying attention to and getting information out to residents about, especially those who might be living in areas that could potentially be impacted. Um, so I know there was a press conference yesterday with, with that said. I know there was a, a press conference that was held, and I read the story about it. But one of the things I feel failed to be mentioned was impacts to homeowners and you know residents um, it talked about potential impacts to the hospitals and you know critical infrastructure but there's a lot of homes around mercy southwest and i think it's hard for homeowners in those areas to really assess what their risk is um, i did find links from the californians reporting to fema maps but you know, one FEMA map says that I'm in a levee protected area, but that doesn't really tell me much. Um, in a year with, you know, historic snowpack and 430% of normal, you know, level of snow that's going to all melt and come down the river channel. Um, and then there's another topographical map that shows that I'm at about the same elevation as the riverbed. So if those levees are breached, um, inundation happens. So more information to help people would be highly appreciated. Thank you, Ms. Shepard. And Mr. Helen, would you be able to have staff follow up? I know we've been getting calls about this very issue, and so that would be very helpful. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Ms. Shepard, thank you so much for bringing forward uh, your, your comments this afternoon. Um, I think many of us have received comments from various different constituents and stakeholders concerned about what may happen with the water flow down the river. Um, I know that we have a water board meeting next week where we will address some of those concerns and what the city is doing in terms of preparation. But I'd like to make a referral tonight asking staff to work, in, work hand in hand with uh, Kern County Emergency Response Services uh, in an effort to uh, communicate clearly and directly to uh, our citizenry about what are the steps that we're taking, what are the potential scenarios, um, and uh, do that frequently. More communication is better at this point. Uh, because you know whatever the reality is um, there's a lot of talk out there and a lot of speculation a lot of worry it's really important for us to meet people where they are and, and communicate as clearly as we can thank you thank you madam clerk next item please consent calendar item 7a through 7u for approval a staff memorandum has been provided regarding item 7A, transmitting corrected minutes. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, no council member has requested uh, to pull an item or recuse themselves from an item. I would just like to make one comment regarding 7I, which is the EOA grant uh, to Clarue Tires. Clarue Tires has been in business in Old Town Kern since 1963 for 60 years. They are a legacy business for our community, um, and they are one of a handful of businesses that remain in Old Town Kern. I talked to Mr. Clarud, Mr. George Clarud today, and he said, we are not leaving. We are committed to Old Town Kern, and thank God they are. They are great anchors in the neighborhood, and we must do more to help those business owners uh, address issues. This EOA grant uh, will be for facade improvements, but also to replace the uh, chain link fence uh, with a wrought iron fence, which is sorely needed given the number of property crimes that that business has experienced over the last few years. And so I'd like to, um, when I make this motion, I'd also like to uh, make a referral tonight uh, that we work in coordination with our business uh, uh, businesses in Old Town Kern uh, to develop a stronger safety plan for that area. Um, that's a referral. Now, my motion is to uh, adopt the consent calendar items. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. Motion is approved with Council Member Smith absent. Thank you. Next item, please. Consent calendar public hearings 8A, 
public hearing to consider general plan amendment zone change number 22-0125 and plan development review 22-0403. Uh, 8B, public hearing to consider economic opportunity area incentive program grant agreement for one million uh, uh, one hundred and six thousand three hundred seventeen dollars and fifty seven cents with James Narducci for facade and site improvements and 8C, public hearing to consider tax equity and fiscal responsibility act TEFRA hearing on behalf of the housing authority of the county of Kern. Thank you. The purpose of this section is to vote on all of the items listed under consent calendar hearings in one motion without further comment. If anyone would like to speak on any of the hearing items listed, the item must be removed from this portion of the agenda. If an item is removed, it will be placed at the end of the regular public hearings portion of the meeting. So at this time, I'll open consent calendar public hearings items 8A through C. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to request that a hearing item be removed from the consent calendar? If so, please come forward. This isn't the time to take testimony, only to remove the matter from the consent calendar hearings. Seeing none, does any council member wish to remove an item from the consent calendar hearings? Seeing none, at this time, consent calendar hearings items 8A through C is now closed. Vice Mayor. Move to adopt consent calendar public hearing items 8A through 8C. Thank you. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. Motion is approved with uh, Council Member Smith absent. Thank you. And now next item. Public hearing 9A, a public hearing to consider an appeal for general plan amendment zone change number 22-0128 and planned development review 22-0073. Cornerstone Engineering Inc. representing uh, Neneda LP on behalf of the High Life Investment uh, Water District and uh, Kirkorian Family Trust is proposing a general plan amendment, zone change, and plan development review on 44.32 acres generally located north of the State Route 178 between Valley Street and Vista Montana Drive. The request includes one, an amendment of the land use designation of the Metropolitan Bakersfield general plan from low density residential to general commercial on 44.11 acres and low medium density residential on 0.21 acres. Two, an amendment to the Bakersfield Municipal Code section 17.06.020 by changing the official zoning map from one family dwelling to regional commercial planned commercial development on 44.11 acres and limited multiple family dwelling on 0.21 acres and three, a planned development review for development of a self-storage facility. Cornerstone Engineering Inc. submitted an ap appeal to the Planning Commission's denial of the request. A proposed negative declaration is available for consideration if the council elects to uphold the appeal. A staff memorandum was received regarding this item, re uh, transmitting a request to uh, postpone a decision for two weeks until the next council meeting. Thank you. For this public hearing, each side will be allowed 15 minutes. It's 15 minutes for all speakers per side, so it's important that you identify yourself and make your statements succinctly so others may speak. We'll hear items, we'll hear statements from those opposed to the staff's recommendation first, that is, those who would like to like the appeal held and the project approved. Then we'll hear from those who would like to speak in favor of the staff's recommendation, that is, those who would like to uphold the Planning Commission's recommendation and deny the project. If there's testimony on both sides, each side will be allowed a five-minute rebuttal. There's a clock on the TV screens behind me, which indicates 15 minutes. Please step to the microphone, identify yourself, and after 14 minutes, a yellow light will come on. At the end of 15 minutes, a red light will flash, indicating your time is up quickly and your statements. If you, have, you may ask questions, questions during your statement, but they won't be addressed until the public hearing is closed. If you have written comments, written comments that are longer than your verbal statement, give them to the clerk and she'll give copies to the council. Please be courteous to others who wish to speak. Madam Clerk, 
has already read the item and will first have comments from our staff and then I will reiterate what the clerk said and then we'll have the motion from Councilman Boyer. Staff, do you wish to make any comments at this point? No comments. Thank you, and at this time, item 9A is open. Begin Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that we did receive a blue memo today stating what the clerk said. The applicant requested a two-week continuance on their appeal. While the public can still make public comments, we encourage you to wait until the item is back at the May 24th City Council meeting since we do not know what the new proposed renderings of the project will entail. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak in opposition of staff's recommendation to continue the appeal hearing to May 24th? Seeing none, is there anyone who wishes to speak in support of staff's recommendation to continue the appeal hearing to May 24th? Please note that since the public hearing remains open on items 9A, sorry, all right. Hi, Welcome Honor and go Wood ahead. Mayor uh, Go and council members, uh, Patricia Newquist here uh, on behalf of the developer and Cornerstone Engineering, just confirming that we'd like to uh, continue this item to May 24th, I believe is the next calendar day for city council. We'll be back and we'd love to do a presentation then. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Newquist. Please note that since the public hearing remains open on item 9A, the GPA cycle will not be effective until the next council meeting when the appeal is heard. Council Member Weir. Thank you, Mayor. In light of the applicant's request, I move to keep the hearing, I, the hearing on item 9A open and continue the appeal to the May 24, 2023 city council meeting. Thank you. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. It's not working. Oh. Colleagues, your request to speak button for some reason is not working. And technology staff, if you want to address that, but I don't. Is there anybody who wishes to speak? No. Okay. Motion is approved. With Council Member Smith absent. Thank you. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Council and Mayor Statements. Thank you. So if you wish to speak, just give me this little signal. Oh, it's working now. Uh, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a quick item. In August of 2019, uh, Legend Lit sent a, an item related to animal care to the City Council. It was then, that item was then sent back uh, to Legend Lit. Um, I'd like to uh, make a referral tonight that that item actually be agendized in the Legend Lit Committee. I think because of the pandemic, um, that item was stalled, but I think it's timely that we bring it back to Legend Lit. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Gray. Thank you, Mayor. A couple of things. Um, first of all, I had the privilege of attending um, the Garden Pathways tea today, and I want to, you know, our mayor, um, she gives a lot of um, kudos to a lot of people in this city, and sometimes I don't feel that you get yours. So with that, she and three other people, her brother, Dr. David Go, started Garden Pathways years ago, and there was probably 500 people in attendance today to honor four different women in our community that have given uh, way far and above um, most. And that was Julie Caesar with Casa Espinanza, Bonnie Turner with the Blessing Corner, Elena LaRouge with, r r remind me, I'm Al sorry. She serves with Alzheimer's and on Alzheimer's. many other boards. Yes, and then Cassie Wright for first responders. Uh, responders. So anyway, it was a blessing to be there, and I always say that uh, Bakersfield is probably the most generous um, community in the entire state of California. We take care of our own, 
and there's so many people that do a good job. So for all those volunteers out there in our community that are constantly giving of themselves, I just want to recognize them tonight and say thank you for what you do for us. Um, I would like to make a couple referrals. One is um, being Mother's Day and Happy Mother's Day to every mother in, in Kern County. Um, there's a lot of flower peddlers, again, out on the streets. And I would like to make a referral that code enforcement may start checking in on some of those peddlers um, to make sure they have a business license because they are encroaching on those businesses that do hold a license, that do have legitimate businesses. And so I would like to see um, that taken care of. It's always a problem before the holidays. And I've had one of my constituents that has a legitimate flower business that had contacted me at one time about that. Um, and then the second thing is, or the last thing is, we hear a lot in the news about how fentanyl is everywhere. Um, there's hardly a family in the U U.S. that's not being affected by this fentanyl crisis. And un un unfortunately, last year, we had 252 Kern County residents died because of fentanyl. And when I heard that figure, I was just, I, it was unbelievable to me. Um, this is completely unacceptable in our community. I think all of us could agree on that. So I'm pleased that the city will be taking a support position on Senate Bill 765 and Assembly Bill 701, which will go after those trafficking, trafficking, trafficking controlled substances. And I want to make a referral tonight that the city support Assembly Bill 33 and Assembly Bill 474, which would increase coordination amongst government agencies to go after the criminal networks that are trafficking these o opioid drugs. As a local government, it's important that our voices are heard in Sacramento so that we can do our part to get a handle on this crisis for the sake of our city, our county, and our state. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember Gray. Appreciate your kind words. Just for the record, I was not a founder of Garden Pathways. My brother and others were instrumental in founding that, and I had the blessing of being able to come back and be a part of the organization. Councilmember Core. You've done Kaur. a great job with it. <laughs> Councilmember Core. Thank you. Um, I just have one uh, comment for staff. I uh, was excited to see the, all of the new housing development happening within Ward 7 and very excited about the project that was uh, also on our um, agenda today. Wanted to make sure that um, any of the future projects coming in, uh, that I also have the opportunity to connect with those, um, uh, the engineers or the firms uh, who are designing the, pro the project in order to make sure that there is the commitment to um, uh, a lot of the priorities that uh, we have for Ward 7, increasing the tree canopy in Ward 7, making sure that, uh, and I, I know our planning department does a great job at this, um, as well as the pedestrian and cyclist infrastructure and safety, that's a, a very big issue in Ward 7, um, as well as a commitment to increasing connectivity, whether that's through sidewalk connection, and I know those are policies we've been talking about in terms of how we can, uh, the city and the developers can kind of meet in the middle to, uh, to make sure that there's safe connectivity uh, as these new projects are coming, especially um, a project of this size and caliber. Uh, so that's something that I just wanted to make a note of, but um, just wanted to thank you all for uh, having the vision to bring a project that increases the density within Ward 7 as well. Uh, so looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Corr. Any others? I don't see any other requests to speak. It's uh, Public Service Recognition Week. To all our employees, thank you so much for your service. With that, we're adjourned at 618.